I'm not exactly new to seeing streamers and YouTubers and popular figures be accused of inappropriate behavior with women, though rarely is it so disappointing. For those of you who don't know, Andrew Callahan, that's the Channel 5 guy, the interviewer, he did a documentary with HBO recently. He's been accused pretty credibly with a wide variety of inappropriate interactions with women going back years now. And I'm going to go over all of it because I know that this is going to blow up pretty soon. And unfortunately, when stuff like this happens, I tend to see a lot of really bad responses from fans and anti-fans of the person being accused, you know? When it comes to stuff like sexual assault and rape, we often hear the term he said, she said. And the reason for that is because it's really difficult to like concretely verify what has happened in a lot of these instances. This isn't just because of the, you know, the nature of the act. It's also because of the social standards we have around the act, you know? If you were hanging out with somebody who was a close friend of yours and randomly just, I mean, for no reason they, they, they hit you or like they stole something from you, some other crime like that, you know? I feel like the situation there would be relatively unambiguous. It'd be pretty easy to talk to other people about it. You could come out and be straightforward with mutual acquaintances or even the police if you felt it was necessary. But that's not necessarily the case when it comes to sexual assault or, or rape. Uh, we have so many weird social standards when it comes to the idea that somebody might have asked for it or that there's some consent that was present at the time that is no longer, you know, said to have been present and people get arguing, you know, argumentative about it. It is difficult to know, but I do think it's easy to have a, a general template of how you should behave and how you should process allegations that, you know, actually do get put forward. It's that phrase, it's, um... Uh, trust but verify, you know, uh, despite many claims to the contrary, you know, false accusations of rape or sexual assault are really not that common, especially when they're coming from people willing to put their names and faces forward, you know, uh, it's pretty scary doing that. And you potentially risk a lot by putting your name and face forward with an accusation like that. You're opening yourself up to a lot of harassment, hatred, doxing, depending on how far things go. I mean, look at what's happened with um, Kai Sinat, that massive Twitch streamer who was recently accused of helping to cover up a friend who raped a girl at a party. Even though it seems like, in terms of the facts, things look really bad for Kai Sinat, the woman who was raped is also getting a lot of hate online from ultra fans or whatever. The threat of false allegations are just not as legitimate as a lot of people would want to have you believe. Anyway, I've talked about that plenty before. I want to talk about these specific allegations, how I feel people should react to them, how I feel about them, and uh, it might take a bit because there's, um, uh, a, there's a lot more than there should be. The right amount is zero, but wow, you know? Compiled helpfully into a Twitter thread. I never in a million years thought that I would be making this video, and I'm shaking because I've tried a couple different times and haven't been able to get my point across, but... Um, I don't like seeing abusers get platforms and my abuser Andrew Callahan also known as all gas no breaks channel 5 and whatever his new HBO shows called I forget um, Has been plastered all over my news feed and I've tried to come to him person to person and try to get him to take Accountability for what he did but his version of what happened the night that he assaulted me is so skewed So I will tell you that he did eventually get consent and that's the main point is that he eventually got consent because he wore me down he told me he needed a place to stay for the night. He had some sort of falling out with one of his crew members or whatever. And I was very clear about the fact that we are not hooking up. He gets in my bed and wears me down to the point where I eventually do agree to do things that I wasn't proud of. And I wasn't proud of them and thought it was my fault for so long that I continued to be nice to him after the situation. He wouldn't leave my house the next morning. This is what I mean about those difficult social standards. You know, I've talked about this before, and hopefully this is pretty straightforward to anyone who watches my content, but obviously, coercion is not consent. You know, we know this for, for contract law. You know, if you get a person drunk out of their mind, you, you harass, you beleaguer them, you implicitly threaten them, you follow them around, you so on and so forth, and then eventually, finally, you're able to get a scrawled signature on a contract, that is incredibly easy to contest in court, because we know, you know, Real consent should be replicable, unambiguous, direct, and straightforward. 
There's an attitude that uh, a lot of people have, you know, especially in these pickup artists or men's rights or red pill communities or whatever, that sex is something you can only get from women after you've tricked them. You know, you have to like wear them down or psychologically manipulate them. This is, of course, incredible loser behavior. It's, you know, just emanates loser energy to essentially admit you can't get a woman to just want to have sex with you, which happens a lot. It's pretty normal, actually. And I mention this because the behavior being described here by, by the accuser here, uh, that, that Andrew Callahan, you know, eventually was able to obtain, you know, wearied consent, but had to wear them down, had to like, you know, um, we'll see the rest of the video, the extent to which this, um, this takes place. But guys doing that, I feel like are often doing it because they think or they think they know that that's just how you do this. You know, like that's how you get women. You kind of like wear them down. It's kind of like a, a, I guess, a twisted takeaway from all those old sitcom-y attitudes towards guys courting women, where, like, the woman will say, no, I'm not interested in you for five years, but the guy will be like, ah, what about today, miss? And then eventually she'll be worn down, and that scene is like a cool love story and not actually is really strange that, that he did that for that long, you know? Add in the implicit threat of, you know, uh, a, a lot of women fear that if a guy is being really pushy anyway, and they just continue to say no to sexual advances, then the guy might just rape them anyway. So, you know, obviously all of this contributes to making any alleged consent obtained under those circumstances just not valid. Sorry, I know a lot of you already know that. I really want to talk about how these allegations should be processed, but let's continue with this video. And then as time went on and I processed things, I thought, you know what, just because eventually i said okay whatever because i was trying to just get the whole night over with so that it could be morning so that he could leave um it's it doesn't discount the fact that i told him no so um i told him no so many times prior to this i said i'm tired i'm not really feeling it i came up with any excuse that i possibly could to just get him off of hot tip for any curious this is not a a, a template for a healthy sexual interaction right here again just in case there's any ambiguity you know and I do know people argue about this online, unfortunately. Me, and he still found a way to coerce me into things that I didn't want to do. And this is really hard for me to say. I never thought I would come forward, but it's even more hard to have to relive the trauma that I endured every single day by seeing this man as a social justice warrior, as someone who cares about human rights, get a platform. You shouldn't be supporting him. And at the end of the day, like I've told close friends of mine, I've tried coming out about this before. And he texted me saying that it basically ruined his life and that his life was over now because of things that I said. And other women have come forward to me. But this is my first time publicly talking about it on a platform like TikTok because I hope it gets traction. I hope people listen to me. I hope that if something similar has happened to you, that you know that that's not your fault. It wasn't my fault what happened to me. Just because I eventually... And it cuts off there. Uh, but the rest of the video can be finished here on the TikTok page. I never... What is it, 2.20 in? Your fault. It wasn't my fault what happened to me. Just because I eventually caved. This is so hard to do, but I eventually, you know, I was really hoping that he would eventually take accountability, but he just texted me this skewed version of what he thought had happened. And in that moment, it wasn't fight or flight. It was freeze. I froze and I couldn't control my body anymore. Not to mention he got me really drunk that night. There you he go. was trying to buy me all kinds of the best kinds of tequila at the dive bar we were at. Um, and a lot of people don't believe me. I've got receipts, I've got photos of us, I've got text messages, but you shouldn't need that. You should believe me and you should stop supporting Andrew Callahan. Take away. Right. So that is the first video. I mean, that's sort of like the, um, the origin point of this. What, what, you'll, you see, what you'll soon see is, is, is quite a lot. But they made a follow-up video uh, just a little while after. This one right here. Was, so just to, you know, complete... The, the videoed portion of this. Uh, let's finish this video right here, and then we'll um, we'll look at more allegations. People on Reddit, feel free to do that, but I can't mentally handle this anymore. This was Andrew and I agreeing to. 
Lamal Mercia, can't wait to see what you got. Yeah, I'm in St. Pete. Who should I kick it with? Me, your home. I'm solo, just walking around. Yes, I just walked in the door. What part of St. Pete are you at? Up north, text me. Hang out when he was in St. Pete. <laughs> this was us the night at the bar. Um, we went into the bathroom to take a photo because this bar, it's the bathroom has its own Instagram page and it's just something people do at that bar. Um, also, like I said many times before, I trusted him, um, you know, and people are blaming me for trusting him, and I did, you know, and it is what it is. This is a comment. Hopefully this goes without saying, but, uh, hanging out with a guy and also taking a bathroom selfie with a guy are both not indications of consent to sex. Just, I know, we're all online here. Uh, sometimes this stuff has to be reaffirmed. Um, from someone who I've been speaking with about what happened. Andrew sexually assaulted me as well. I had previously been involved with him, but only when I was extremely drunk. I confronted him about it and he invited me to dinner to apologize. Then he assaulted me in my car. I had to physically kick him out. Thank you for sharing, Kim. I literally finally came out about this yesterday on my Insta because I cannot fuck stand this dude popping up on my TV as a social justice warrior. I've also heard many similar stories from others. Happened to her. This is a message I got. Um about a year ago from someone. Yes, of course, I know it sounds cheesy to say, but you're very brave for even reaching out to people because that's really hard to do. Can I ask some people I know if they would be willing to talk to you and I can give them your Insta? Also, my friend has mutual friends with his camera guys and I basically heard he was sleeping with girls who looked very young and live with their parents, so 99% underage while on tour. Who said that he uh, has no been known to associate with underage girls. This is the story from the same person of her experience. You can Pretty much all of them uh, have ever had uncomfortable situations with him, been assaulted or know someone who has. The situation that I was in was at a party probably three years ago, and I thought he was cool at first, and we had a pretty good convo. Then we basically went into a room kind of isolated from everyone, and he was really pressuring me to go to his house, and I said no multiple times. He kept pushing and pushing. As you know, he's a very tall guy, and I'm only 5'4", and I was pretty drunk, obviously, because party, duh. And I feel like he was blocking the doorway, so we were in there for a while, and luckily my friend came to check on me. You can pause to read any of this stuff. Uh, this is about how he was cancelled on his uh, French Quarter confession show when he went to Loyola because of the same sorts of allegations. Can... Oh boy. I'm not trying to gather more details. He was meant to Loyola New Orleans, but I heard he got cancelled pretty bad. It was kept in the down low. That's why he was replaced in his show French Quarter Confessions, because he doesn't speak much about that in New Orleans anymore. We're trying to get more info to further support. Also, Tim Heidecker viewed my story. Your TikTok reposted, so we know he's aware. He's one of my favorites, so I'm hoping he pays attention and takes action. We got you. I know how hard it is to come forward, especially when your abuser holds a position of power. You're so brave and you did a big thing. French Quarter confession show when he went to Loyola because of the same sorts of allegations. You can pause to read that. Just wow, there are a lot of these. Hi, I just wanted to let you know I went to school with Andrew. He pulled the same shit with me and a friend of mine. He frequently Airbnb listed his place and did the I need somewhere to stay tactic, which felt very intentional. He also used to try and tell people he was on a male birth control injection. I'm very sorry this happened to you too, and I know how gross it feels to watch people praise his politics. Just another story. Um, he's got a list. Wow. Someone told, someone told me he told them that he has a list of women that he gets to give him head without reciprocating, like truly disgusting. Also, maybe TMI are uncomfortable, but he thinks the clitoris is inside the vagina. It's actually embarrassing for him that he's this gross. We shouldn't feel bad because he sucks, lol. Uh, you know, women who he gets to give them head, give him head. Um, another instance of sexual assault. <sighs> I'm so sorry you messaged him and he didn't do anything that's incredibly disappointing. We're listening to you in New Orleans and in Austin. My friend lived with him for a while and apparently sexually assaulted their other roommate who has been terrified to come forward. You're helping a lot of people share this, and I'm sorry some people are so thick in the head that they don't even have the compassion and can't even educate themselves on consent. People really out here pretending to care about women until their favorite public figure violates a woman, then it becomes inconvenient for them. And I'm keeping these people private, and they've all consented to me sharing their stories. And I'm doing so because I've already put my face out there. I'm already getting all the hate. It is what it is at this point. There's another story... Hi, just wanted to say in response to your most recent post, I've heard through the grapevine of Andrew begging girls for sex till they said yes, and I have a mutual who went on a date with him. He used the same excuse, fall out with crew and needed a place to stay. She said, no, you have money, pay for a hotel, then he got pissed as fuck. More people saying that they've heard about this before. 
went to a neighboring high school as him at the same time he was in high school, not the first time hearing about something like this. Another story. Um, my inbox is... Andrew Callahan and I are the same age. He went to a high school in Seattle near mine at the same time as me, so I know a lot of the same people as him. He also frequently uh, frequented local kickpats and spodies, basically parties with jungle juice in a park, and was doing some rapping stuff. I'm going to assume they meant raping stuff. Back then, so a lot of people knew of him. It's pretty common knowledge in Seattle social circles that he's committed sexual assaults. I don't know his victims personally, but have friends who do. To my knowledge, alcohol and coercion have become a pattern. He's known locally to a lot of people as a predator. Also, you have my consent to share this. My inbox is flooded with people saying that they are proud of me for speaking up because they're too scared to. So I'm sharing their stories for them. Um, this is absolutely taking a huge toll on my mental health. Um, I can see that a lot of you don't want to believe women when they come forward about things. And um, I've just got to say that says a lot about your personality and who you are. Um, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do, and if you think I'm making it up, that's on you. Man, I guess, I guess while we're on a roll with these, we should look at the rest of the accusations. Uh, this was the one that was listed in the video there. When we was on tour, he took me and my friend to a party and tried to find my roommate. After she said no, he left our house screaming. I'm from Seattle and I know many people in common with him. You're not the first person who I've heard about this happening to. Very sorry. Went to a neighboring high school. Heard more than enough weird things about Andrew before survivors came forward. Not the first time I've heard of girls coming out about this silly hair man. His hair is indeed silly. Uh, more. Okay. Even more damning, people unearthed some accusations that were made back in 2021 and 2020. He knowingly sexually assaulted my friend that he got away with it. Please stop supporting his dumbass show and unfollow him. Just case y'all can't put two and two together. The ugly loser who hosts the all-gas, no-break show is a sexual abuser. I know people he's assaulted and he is aware and doesn't give a shit. He's around Tampa and St. Pete a lot. This is from 2020. Just more context on the last post. Hung out with all gas, no breaks last night as he was in Nashville and he was trying so hard to fuck my drunk friend who made it clear she said no. Uh, manipulate ass MF who was using his platform to get girls to sleep with him. He's currently touring and living in an RV so watch out if he comes to your city. And then this person oh, says, yeah, he went to Went to school with me my freshman year, raped an underage girl in Seattle and was a total creep to a bunch of other girls in my friend's high school in Seattle. Hung out with him once my freshman year when I was still 17. He aggressively came on to me even after I told him no multiple times, then tried to kiss me and get back or get me to go to his place even after I told him I was uncomfortable. Then he tried following me and my roommate home in the dark, piece of garbage. Okay. That was that was um that was a lot more than I thought there would be, uh, by by far. So it seems by all accounts, at least the accounts of the accusers, uh, that Andrew Callahan is the most rapist of all time. Uh yeah, well. So, you know, I was going to do this spiel on how, like, okay, well, how do we trust but verify? What information can we use to uh, determine the veracity of these claims? Uh, how are the stories written? Do they seem uh, outlandish? Are people coming forward with their real faces and names, or is it all being kept anonymous? Is this being done organically with people communicating with each other and broadly, or does it seem like a bunch of dropped info messages. Unfortunately for Andrew Callahan, literally every single piece of information here contributes to my impression of his guilt. Not only are there an enormous number of accusations dating back a while that seem to be consistent with each other, both like in uh, timeline-wise and also in like the kind of guy that he is, they're describing him as the same kind of guy here. It's not just that he's a predator. It's the specific kind of like Oh yeah, he'll like, he'll do this like begging for sex, uh, like assaulting people, uh, doing this trick where he'll say, oh yeah, I have no place to stay tonight because I'm driving around in a van. Uh, what about you? You know, do you have anything? Yeah, wow. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, mm, yeah, I was going to end this like when I eventually finished the segment with a big man, this looks bad, but let's wait for Andrew's statement because everyone should get a, and we should still wait for a statement, but who boy. Yeah, I can't imagine. Th this looks so bad for him. I mean, there the people who are accusing him, not only do we have a long time range here, they're communicating with each other too. It's not just like 
a coordinated series of accusations that just emerge inorganically, spontaneously at the same time. This seems like a very internally consistent, real set of accusations against him. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, really bad. Uh, he looks kind of like a monster. Uh, I don't even know uh, what he could say to amend or lessen these allegations, really. I, I genuinely have no idea. It would have to be some insane deep state. All of this was faked to take him down for exposing the truth about something or another. I No, I, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, since this seems pretty straightforward, at least in terms of perceived guilt, not guaranteed, but man, you know, feels like nearly as close as you can get to it just from initial impressions. Uh, since I can't really talk about that, let's just talk for a hot second about consent because it's such an important topic that we have to keep readdressing. Andrew Callahan, based on his behavior described by the accusers here, seems to be an, a remorseless piece of shit who just does not care about hurting people. So nothing I can really say here, I, can, I can't really like facetiously offer it as advice to him, you know, like, like he's some kind of dumbass who just inadvertently trips his way through like 50 rapes or whatever. But speaking broadly, okay, I want to address what I feel like might be the root of an insecurity that can make people act like him sometimes. Well, not make, you're not forced to, but you know, that can lead people to act that way sometimes. That I want to be really clear on, okay? The idea that shenanigans or chicanery or dishonesty or duplicity or any kind of trickster bullshit is necessary to capture the interest of women is completely not true. And the belief that those things are necessary is directly responsible for guys shifting their standard for what they think acceptable consent is. Because if a person truly believes that the baseline for getting a girl interested in having sex with you is having to like trick it out of them or kind of wear them down, then they are going to believe that since sex is just a normal human thing that we've been doing for all of human history, that that's like an acceptable standard, even with a bit of leeway in both directions in terms of like moral permissibility. Because they think it's necessary, they must think then that it has to be acceptable. But it's not necessary. It's psychotic. It's very strange behavior, actually. I, I know this isn't entirely a guy thing. I do know there's this very weird, like, internet cult of femcells who believe in, like, using horoscopes and, like, pheromone pussy juice aroma to attract guys to trick them into... Listen, there are a lot of weird people out there, okay? For the love of God, if you're gonna have sex with somebody, all right, if this is a person you're gonna have sex with, you should be able to get a very straightforward yes out of them. It should be very easy. Not like they're super plastered, a straightforward one. That doesn't mean they have to sign a fucking consent workshop sheet before you do anything to them, you know? It's okay to like implicitly sort of pull each other step by step towards having sex, you know? Like if you're making out and she grabs your dick and you're okay with it, you know, don't be too autistic about this. But if hypothetically, you know, you two were silently but very aggressively making your way to the bedroom. You know, you should be able to say at any point during that, hey, to be clear, we're, you want to f***, right? And she would then say, like, well, yeah, obviously, look, I'm grabbing your dick. You, you, you could just, it, you should always be able, you know? It's like, it's what they say, trust but verify, okay, right? You should be able to verify that, okay? For God's sake. Not that this really applies to Andrew Callahan, because it seems like he's pretty willfully abusing others, so... I, there's so there's so little ambiguity here. It feels it's kind of difficult to even add anything apart from how bad it is. Oh, I guess I, I guess I'll just add this on because I'm going. This is going to come up like inevitably down the line. People are going to go, "Oh, that sucks." I really enjoyed his work. A couple of things. First of all, all of the victims who are speaking up about Andrew Callahan's behavior have a right to feel bile in their throats when they see him getting praised as some kind of lefty icon, despite his behavior. That's fine. That's valid. 
If you don't want to watch any of the stuff he's ever produced because of his behavior, that's fine, that's valid. If there are some of his videos that you find really interesting, entertaining, informative, or educational in some way or another, I think it's possible to continue to enjoy those aspects of the video in spite of who he is as a person. That is going to vary person to person. You know, uh, I for, for me personally, you know, I think, especially because in the Channel 5 videos, you know, 98% of the content is the lunatics he's talking to. And there are some really heartfelt and interesting videos that he's made. It doesn't make him less of an alleged monster. I just know people are going to be arguing about whether or not other people are bad people for this, that, the other. Should he be canceled? Should he be deplatformed? I normally have, first of all, we don't really have direct control over that. So it's not anything you can do, like canceling or deplatforming or whatever. But in concept, should he be like removed from the public space? Like if you could magically as God do that, should he have that done to him? Well, I normally lean on the side of permissiveness here. You know, I do think people can make mistakes and change. And I generally give more leeway on that than a lot of other people. This is so far beyond that. Assuming these allegations are reliable, and again, they seem pretty reliable to me, it, it, it goes beyond like Andrew Callahan having made mistakes or having done some shitty things. Uh, it seems like active, willful, continuous, long-term, predatory, monstrous behavior, rape, abuse, sexual assault, the whole nine yards for as long as he could get away with it. And while it is possible maybe for people to grow out of doing that, that's a long road. That is a that is a whole process. And it is certainly not one that that is not a road that can be crossed over the course of a three month YouTube hiatus and a quit longer apology. I have no idea what it would take for me to trust somebody who had acted like that in the past. Yeah. Disappointing. Not much else to say.